Here's what I look for when I'm assessing an ECG out on the road. Step one, the rhythm and rate. I'll first check the rate and then assess to see if the rhythm's regular or irregular. I'll then look at the rhythm in more detail. So for example, if I see this criteria, I know that it's sinus rhythm. Step two, calculate the cardiac axis. By looking at leads one, two and AVF, I can see if the axis is normal, deviated to the left, deviated to the right, or if it's extreme deviation. Step three, calculate the PR interval. So this is the PR interval, and I need to figure out if it's a normal duration, a short duration, or if it's prolonged. Step three, assess for pathological Q waves. I'll then glance at all the leads to make sure that there's no pathological Q waves. Give this a pause if you want to see the criteria that I use to identify these. Step four, assess the QRS complex. So this is the QRS complex. I'm looking to see if it's too broad and if there's any signs of right or left ventricular hypertrophy. Step five, assess the ST segment and the T waves. So this is the ST segment. I'm assessing for any ST elevation and or depression, as well as looking for any abnormal T wave inversions. There's a bunch of potential causes for ST T and T wave changes, but an MI tends to be at the forefront of my mind at this stage of the interpretation. And finally, step six, assess the QT interval. This is the QT interval, so I'll first use the R to R method just as a quick glance to give me a rough idea on the distance, and then I'll back this up with either a QT corrected reading, if I'm lucky enough for this to be on the ECG strip, or I'll use this calculation, which is easily done online if you're terrible at maths like me.